Tales from Etheria. Episode 7, The Dragon's Lair. Previously on Tales from Tetheria, the bounty hunters decided to fight their way through a kobold encampment. Many of the kobolds were exploded or melted into puddles, but the kobold scale sorcerer was choked out and taken prisoner. However, before losing consciousness, he warned the adventurers of a dragon. All right, you're all caught up. Greetings, gamers. Welcome back to the Lasercorn channel and to our D&D adventure. I, of course, am Lasercorn, better known as the Dwarf Warrior Krulax. I lost my. Oh, hang on. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> something, something, something. I have axes. I'm Krulax. <laughs> I'm a dwarf warrior, fighter, guy who uses axes. Uh, joining me today, we have Mari as Kaizen Voldra. That's right. From the wonderful world of the Milfwood Forest, I am Kaizen. <laughs> Hailing Zoe from Voldra. the Milfwood Forest. That's right. Uh, Very proud of my roots. <laughs> Noah playing. Deborah, the uh, warlock gnome. Damn straight. I love to light shit on fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, Joven uh, playing Thalamir, the head of a bounty hunter guild that uh, is pretty much just consists of us, we're pretty sure. But uh, really? yeah. it is me. And the problem with filming so many episodes before they go live is I have no clue if the audience likes my accent or not. So to you, I say <laughs> I do not care. <laughs> I can almost assure you that they do not. Uh, ah, yes, <laughs> but, but, uh, but we appreciate you putting in the effort to do that accent. And uh, returning as the as the game master who will be taking it away from here, uh, Ruben, Ruben Bressler. Say hello. Yeah. Hi, how's it going, everybody? I apologize. Between last episode and this episode, I've lost between eight to ten pounds with a haircut and a shave. But uh, <laughs> that's okay. Now I now I'm a young wizard instead of an old old wizard. Gandalf the White. That's right. You're Benjamin 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 Buttoning. Nope, that's right. As a wizard. Going backwards in time. <laughs> Benjamin Button. <laughs> Benjamin Buttoning. Uh. All right, uh, I'm I'm kind of banged up. I'd like to to find a place to like rest and like bandage my wounds and whatnot. Can I do like a, a perception check to see if there's like a nice cave or something on this mountain right. road that we can uh, use to as shelter for the night, or perhaps so, a nice opening that doesn't put us in a cave where giant things like to sleep. Sure. Uh, so this would be more of a survival check. Okay. To make sure that you can find a good campsite. I will roll for survival. I have plus one on survival, and I've rolled a five. Excellent. <laughs> you do indeed find classic a nice, laser corn roll. <laughs> you do indeed find a nice overhang um, uh, that is sheltered and out of the way. Uh, looks like it might lead into a deeper portion of a cave underneath. Um, but it is dry, it is sheltered by vines and trees, Ooh. and well able to, uh, to keep you all uh, protected from the main road. I might be What's really someone. funny be is that we have a wagon that could keep us protected and off and, and, and offer us some some shelter, but we keep kidnapping people and, and it's kind of full of people. <laughs> right, yeah. Plus, if we just like if we just like go to bed on the wagon, in the wagon in the middle of the road then anyone who happens along can mess with us. I'd rather be off the road, this mountain, this winding mountain road and, and somewhere safe. I'm gonna use my tinkerer's abilities and I wanna, I wanna build again some simple traps, you know, string <laughs> with some knickknacks, make a noise, you know, simple sure. trip wires. And oh, I, wanna, no, yeah. I wanna start putting them in a perimeter, you know, the entrance of the cave and also a perimeter a good distance, um, making sure, you know, no one can run away from the camp but also no one can come in. Easy enough to do. You have some twine, you have some bells, um, and you can uh, you can easily enough put up uh, a couple at the entrance, uh, a couple on the path on the way to the entrance, uh, maybe one in the back leading deeper into the cave, just in case someone tries to run deeper into the cave. The area surrounding your cave is actually a nice thicket. Mm -hmm. um, really nice, you know, probably 10 feet tall, uh, uh, thorny thicket that can sort of block any um, vision from the road. You're able to put your wagon in a place that is uh, out of the way and probably not able to easily be seen. I like my thickets thick with, with three C's. 
Mm. I like thick ass. <laughs> thick ass. That would be an emphasis that I wish I could unhear. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, good work Deborah. on the traps. Uh, good, good work on the early detection system, Deborah. You're a useful and vital yeah, member of the group. Unlike some people, yeah, and then I ADT. gesture at Falamir. What? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? I am the leader of this <laughs> concoct group together. Uh, Deborah, go ahead and make a perception check while you're putting up your uh, your trip wires. Perception check rolled a an eleven. Okay. Um, you see, as you're setting up the trip wire at the back of the cave, uh, there appears to be a rat. Mm. Sitting there and just watching you set up the tripwire sort of curiously. As you identify that it is there, it runs back into the back of the cave. All right, y'all, listen. I'll be putting up these traps. Everyone, I need you to hear this. Putting up these traps. I saw a rat. Okay, not a mouse, a rat. Pretty big. Not only did it stop and watch me, what I did, but it registered what I was doing. I saw it. It was like muttering to itself. It was really strange. And then when I looked at it, it ran away deeper into the cave. All I'm saying, there's probably a thousand rats in there, and there, there, there's a bigger rat mama in there that's going to come and fuck with us. So we got to be prepped for that. All I'm saying, we don't got to move. I'm down to kill a big-ass rat. No, that's coming. That's so a, You are saying that's that a, you have found us some dinner, and then you let it get away? Uh, I don't eat rat. Yeah. That's that's just me. I went Deborah on that one. I also don't eat rat. That's an interesting assumption you made, though, based off one rat, that there is a, a horde of rats waiting to devour us. I mean... Listen, you, uh, it's a law. Whatever can go wrong will go wrong. That's especially true. Especially when I'm in the party. Also, like the cockroach, uh, if you see one, you must just b- uh, believe that there are hundreds more ready in the walls. All right. Uh, well, well, smart, did you see it me. crawl into, like, a crevice or something? Maybe we could, like, block that crevice with some... Like a boulder or something, or Ooh, rocks. it went deeper into the cave. Let's just let's just close off the cave entrance. I like that. Okay. Y- your little area is probably. I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice, uh, you know, probably f- fifty feet deep overhang. Um, it's not like a full cave mouth. It's more of an. There's more of like an overhang, like eighty feet wide. Um, but then at the back, there is a bit of a cave mouth that's probably a 10-foot diameter circle, um, you know, sort of tube that leads deeper into the mountain. Um, this is easy. I can take care of this, no problem. Hey, Crusoe, do me a favor. Just stand here with your pants down. Cruel bend axe. over. Oh, I'm sorry. Cruel <laughs> axe. Just take your pants down, turn around, bend over, put butt towards the cave, and anything coming out of the cave will get so scared it will go right back in. <laughs> First of all, I've been told I have an adorable butt, so probably not scaring anything away. <laughs> Second of all, your ideas are bad, and you're not a useful member of the group. Ah, <laughs> Anyone no. have any actual ideas? <laughs> I, can I use my dark vision to 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 um, and and roll for perception to see what what, yeah. what I might be able so to see? So go ahead and look deeper into the cave. Is what you're looking for? Yes. All right. This go ahead. Suspicious. You've got dark vision. You can look deeper into the cave. Go ahead and walk over and uh, and roll roll perception for me. I can't see nothing. I rolled a four. Mm. <laughs> it oh, sure God. is. It sure is a hole in the wall. Um, <laughs> it looks like it does go quite a bit deeper and further down into uh, the mountain. Uh, Deborah set up early detection, so we'll hear anything coming from that way, correct? And also, if we want, yeah. we can put the cobalt to sleep in front of it. So if anything does come oh, out... Oh, yeah, it'll get the cobalt first. Ooh, yeah, that's cobalt smart. Cobalt. Yeah, I put actually, the cart. That's the, that's the first good idea I've heard out of Falmir. What Let's are you talking about? I have an important part for this team. I have <laughs> all the arrows, and I have hit the bad guys. We'd, so we'd like to take the tied-up kobold and place him kind of in the cave mouth there, and that's where he'll be sleeping. So Get if your so- fucking hands off of me! If something you screams, of shit. why the f- why what the fuck are you guys doing? Hey, oh, shut up! Right. Hit him with the mouth. That's right. Ouch! I love him. Why? Listen, you pieces of shit. Why? What, listen, you, uh, you're gonna get it. Is what's gonna happen. Bumbridge the Great is gonna come and get you. Generations Can we get of kobolds have we- watched as Bumbridge, the all-seeing, has grown. Bumbridge. The chicaneress is going to have his vengeance upon <laughs> you. First all right, of all, the yeah, chicaneress is a dumb I name. Can I shackle his feet up? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'd like to gag him. Sure. Yeah, gag him, shackle him. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to put a firebomb. I'm going to put one in his boot. 
Just in Bumbridge case. Bumbridge the Great! Bumbridge the Ancient! Bumbridge the Gigant! Oh, okay. All right. And this doesn't change anything. <laughs> My chartreuse brethren yeah, of the yeah, scale will yeah. be avenged! Listen, By listen, Bumbridge you're, you're going to stop powerful. talking or I'm going to break your toes. Listen here, Sonny. I've been around for... Ten All right, I, I, I'm going to pull mouth. out my hammer and I'm going to smash one of his feet. <laughs> Ouch! Ouch! Dude, I told you. Listen, I told you. You son of a bitch. I'll get this. I'll, I'm going to fucking murder you is what's going to happen. I'm going to break gonna your take, other foot. I'm going to take my broken foot and stick it right up your I, ass. I want to take my hammer and I want to break his other foot. <laughs> Ouch. Oh damn! Jeff was a fucking this savage today. What is happening? Quatch is gonna know. be like, "Are you guys the good guys?" I'm not so sure. No, uh, I don't think we are uh, at all. <laughs> if it's breaking feet time, you go right ahead. <laughs> but if you want me to heal them, you can let me know too. Yeah. Look, we gave him every opportunity to shut up. I I think it's uh. I think it was I think it was foot breaking time. Anyway, so we tossed him <laughs> over there near the entrance of the cave mouth. He'll act as a, if something gets him and he starts screaming, he'll act as an early warning system. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna let you assholes know, you pieces of shit. Well, we imagine oh, whatever, not, we imagine like whatever gets you will, will cause you to quietly. scream. Yeah. Well, that's fair. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the uh, other option would have probably been to have him do some sorcery stuff and not torture him. But you know what? That's for another day. And Batu oh. is just angrily glaring at everybody. Also, Kaizen, when have you ever been against torture? This is like the first time <laughs> I'm hearing of this. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's first... First, it was the rat in the butt, and that already just set me off. Okay. And then it was just ha the hammer toes, man. The hammer toes really gets me. I'm, oh, I'm, okay. a, I'm, a, I'm a foot person, so, you know, <laughs> Kaizen's a foot fetish person, and, you know, the, the oh, hammers okay. of the toes. Oh, we, just... we triggered you. We're very sorry yes, about that. Yes. Yeah, we'd like to bed down for the night and, I guess, do, like, a long rest to recover. I know my health okay. points aren't at full. You are all able to get a long rest. All of your hit points and all of your spell slots are recovered. All right, uh, so we've, we're fully rested. Everyone feeling good? I feel great. Uh, should we get back on the road? Let's get this bounty turned in. Yep. Oh, oh yes. I think I, I, I've made everyone breakfast. Oh, all right. And you, well, turn, and you turn around and there is just a, uh, a halfling cooking over an open fire near you. Oh, great, another one to join a us on this trip. Fantastic. Hi there. How are you all? Wait. It's good to see you. Where'd this halfling come from? I say kill it now. Is I the agree. halfling talking to us? Yeah, talking to you. Rise that and shine. It's good to see you. Quatch is talking uh, to us, right? Not the halfling. No, He's no being not the halfling is. Quatch, Wait, is. Quatch is like still waking up. The halfling? You, I thought you said the halfling was roasting on an open fire. Was cooking. Oh, co he's bacon. cooking something. Oh, okay. Yeah, making oh. bacon. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I've hi. got bacon. I've got bacon and coffee and tea. Would you like some tea? Coffee. Listen, guys. I say we just pack up this cart and we just start moving. Oh. I don't like this. Oh no. I, I want to threaten it. You, you're, you're, you're just Do stick it. around for a minute. This is gonna be a nice, nice breakfast. Yeah, no. Can I threaten? Sure. I, I'd like. I'd like to. Um, I'd like to uh, grab it by its throat and ask him uh, wh wh what what is up with. Sure. What, what, what's up with you? Yeah. Uh, so you approach, and you want to try to grapple this person. Um, I want to. I want to choke him. Okay. Like I just want to. I would just want to take my hand and choke him. Go ahead and make a grappling check. So make an attack roll, and I'm going to use my uh, try to not get choked. My attack is, so it's 12 plus 7. So 19. 19. I actually rolled higher than you. <gasps> with, you. with interesting and sort of anachronistic <laughs> strength, this halfling is able to bat your hand away from choking and says, Oh, why would you? That's not fair. I'm just trying to be hospitable. We can have a nice chat. Bastard, what is this? This is... Uh I Somebody am, else needs to attack because I, I, I gave it whatever I could just right now. Someone I'm throw Quatcha at him. I'm just making you a <laughs> nice breakfast. Why are you being so aggressive? Well, because it's you're poison. being extremely suspicious. Extremely. 
Extremely suspicious. You just showed up here. We don't know who you are. You're apparently making bacon, which, by the way, does smell delicious. And it I am hungry. Really good. It smells very good. It smells very good. Very good cook. Yeah. I, I'm down I to I'm down to hear this halfling out and get some free bacon out of it. I what tell you, you now, I will not buy a home in a distant country that I only visit once a week every year. <laughs> oh, oh, don't worry. You don't have to pay anything. You all <laughs> came and lived in my house for the night. Mmm. Well, so I thought I might make you some nice bed and breakfast. You know. Since you rolled a five on your survival check. Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> I thought the place we found was really nice for a five roll. <laughs> I'm like, dang. <laughs> well, it you sure know. Looked, it sure looked nice and not threatening at all. Yeah. Look, Krulax is never one to turn down a free breakfast. So I go over and, uh, and pull up a seat and uh, get, grab myself some bacon. Now Wait. you said... You said that your name was Krulax, right? Yeah, that's me. And uh, and who might you be? It's very nice to meet you, Krulax. Mm -hmm. My name's Billy. Oh, hi, Billy. Mm -hmm. Well, no, uh, no, no. Listen, we're packing up. If he wants to talk to us, we can walk and talk. I don't trust no Billy in Dungeons and Dragons. My name is Deborah Mustard. His <laughs> name is Billy. I, I don't my, trust him either. But I have this delicious full... Loris breakfast getting ready for you. Oh, the full Loris. Uh, <laughs> well, I, unfortunately, I think, uh, think, my friends like, are a little Krulax, antsy here, and we do have to be getting on the road. Before you feed anything to Krulax, I want I want to feed it to the sorcerer first. Uh, oh, you're the talking necromancer about, is Batu. You're talking about Mike. I know Mike. Mike's great. Mike's you know each other? Very, Mike's a very nice, nice man. Aren't you, Mike? And Mike is just sort of like trying to suss out what's happening. He's like, um, yeah, I think I'm a knight. What? Uh -uh. And and Billy looks at Mike and says, yeah, I'm a very nice man. Uh, go ahead and roll perception as Mike looks at Billy and Billy looks at Mike. And then Mike is suddenly like, oh, okay. 16. 17 total here. Uh, um, I'm 19 total. So I have 14. Okay. Man, I'm not really uh, well. It was not, it was not that difficult to pick this one up uh, as uh, Billy gives a big exaggerated, like a big exaggerated wink. Oh, okay. And then M Mike is like, uh, okay. Yeah, I'll try the bacon first. Just no, 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 all of this is Fallon, bad. you're knocking arrow. Why? Everyone you... on the same page? Oh, don't, don't, you don't want to start anything in here. All right. Yo, I don't want him giving him that bacon. Yeah, let's just, uh, let's load everything back in the wagon. Look, thank you very much for your hospitality no, no, and letting no, us stay I for the night. I don't think, I don't think that that is going to happen. I start loading See, the kobold back. <laughs> you, so as soon as you start trying to put the kobold back, he steps in front of you. Mmm. This little and, half and, All right. Yeah, and he says, now, listen here, Mr. Krulax, was it? I'm That's starting me. shit right very, here and right very now. Very nice man. And he starts getting slightly taller. Mm. Yep, I'm, I'm going to, Krulax, you. duck. I'm throwing my rot grub pot right at his face right now. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Yeah, I'm starting him. it off. Get him. I don't like him. <laughs> you grab the kobold. He's going to get hit by the rot grubs. We're doing this all at once. I'm doing it. Yeah, all I hate that Billy. I wanted was to have a nice breakfast. Yeah, yeah, you're the Billy ones ain't it. that are trying to start a fight in my house. All right, I'm just gonna throw him. I'm throwing. Is he him. calling us paranoid? I feel like he's calling us paranoid. Not okay with that. Yeah, so I duck like uh, as okay. as Deborah said. Deborah said sure. duck to me. Yeah. So I'd like to duck. Go ahead and make an attack roll with your rot grub pot. Uh, meanwhile, I've just been sidestepping my way 17. over to the, uh, the, the 17 is going to hit. So the rot grub pot makes a swarm. I hope I didn't just, I don't care. He can get eaten by rock rubs too. Who's, who's no, he? No, I think oh, you the, made the right the move. Kobold? If you weren't going to attack, I was going to attack. Uh, yes, while all of this is going on, I am just being nice and sneaky. I am walking backwards over to Batu. Great. Where is everyone trying to be? Deborah was throwing a uh, a pot, a and he said pot. duck. So I would like to duck and try and like roll away from the sure. the. Make a dexterity uh, saving throw. 
That is a nine plus my dexterity, which is plus one, so ten. Mm. Well, I mean, you sort of dodge out of the way. Mm-hmm. Um, which means that it the, the rock rub pot does indeed uh, break open on impact, and it shatters, uh, and it is going to both hit uh, Billy and shatter in melee with you. So now there's just a pile of rot grubs in front of both of you. And Billy says, oh no, why did you have to go and do that? That wasn't very nice. Now I'm going to have to get mean. (laughs) And Billy is going to remove his hat. And as he removes his hat of disguise, he begins to change. He begins to uh, turn from a halfling uh, with smooth pinkish skin and a nice Viking-style top and pantaloons, and he begins to get scales, mm. green and yellow. Oh, and shit. his eyes get much more feline and serpentine, and he grows in size, and he becomes... Oh, shit! A oh. green dragon wormling. Shh. Oh, shit! Go ahead and roll initiative. Guys, I am actually very frightened. I'm actually very frightened. I think you have already made that pun. I'm just letting you know. I don't know if you are keeping track of them, but I am letting you know. Okay, okay. All right, rolling for initiative. Shit, is this Oh, that's a net 20. Way to waste it. Yeah. But yeah, wait a minute. My yeah, one I, I good roll. Like to. I'm totally wrong. <laughs> Context clues suggest that this is Bumbridge. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, it is Bumbridge. Lizzie Gordon and I totally wasted our rolls, man. We both had good rolls. <laughs> <laughs> we never roll like this. I got a 15. Okay, can we just I got one a 17. Second, one second, one second. And as part of Bum, uh, as part of Billy, aka Bumbridge's. Uh, transformation, it is actually going to fly up. Which means that Krulax is going to get an attack of opportunity before combat pops off. I, I thought awesome. we were in a overhang or something. You are. It does overhang. Oh. but There is a ceiling. So does, so there is a ceiling, but he's just, but it's high enough up where he can fly. Yeah, he's got okay. like 30 feet Okay. to the ceiling. So he's like 15, 20 feet up above you. Okay. Okay, I have an attack of opportunity. Can I uh, can I hit him with the old whip axe? You I made can a whip hit axe. him with the old whip axe. <laughs> All right, whip the old whip axe at him, and uh, here we go. Go ahead and roll. <laughs> oh, I, I ain't afraid stuck. of no dragon. Oh God damn it, Mario was right. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a it's a two plus. Uh, yeah, no. What uh, what's my modifier? I'm gonna guess that a two isn't gonna hit. Yeah, all right. Okay. Damn it. Um, so you you throw the whip axe and it kind of whips out and it misses and sort of hit hatchets sadly into the ground. Sweet. Well, you know, kind of new with the whip axe, guys. So someone else do something. <laughs> all right. Top of the round, Kaizen. Uh, all right. I'm gonna use some martial arts. Uh-huh. Um, do, can can I actually reach him, or will I have to have to? Um, if you do some use... dope monk shit, you can probably like monk <laughs> up the wall or something. Oh um, yeah, but they Let are do fifteen some... feet above you. Yeah, I got I got some acrobatics, uh, some some Jackie Chan shit. Cool. So um, I'd like to I'd like to jump and uh jump towards the wall, bounce off, and try to try to hit him. Okay. I, I think maybe like around his leg is as much as cool. I'm going to get height. Go ahead and make a attack roll. Or sorry, acrobatics check first. Oh my gosh, it's a 19. Nice. Uh, plus seven for cool. acrobatics. Perfect. Wow. You, find, you find incredibly perfect handholds as if this were a rock climbing gym. And you're Ooh. able to kip up the wall and get a good angle to uh, to deliver your your punch. Oh, hell or yeah. Or kick or stab or whatever. Yeah, I'm going to do an unarmed strike so that if it hits, I can do a bonus attack afterwards. Great. Cool. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, shit. It's it's an it's an eight plus seven. Which is 14? Uh, 15. 15. 15. 15 is not going to hit. Damn oh. it. Good jump. Poor so you made a good jump, uh, but it didn't quite get to where you needed to go, but... 
because you didn't have to have anything in your hands, you didn't, you weren't weighed down by any of your weaponry, you do get... This is still while you're sort of crouching tiger, hidden dragon, floating up in the sky. Oh, nice. Okay. You haven't landed yet. So take another swing. It's a 15 plus, plus 7. Woo! That hits. Oh. Yes. Yeah, punch that dragon. Yes. Okay, damage roll. D4, D4. Here we go, D4. Oh, jeez, it's a 1. No, oh my god. No. It's a plus. 1 plus 5. 1 plus 5. So 6 damage. <laughs> 6 damage. Cool. Yeah, you that's punch right. A dragon in the mouth. Aw, oh, bum uh, bridge oh, for yeah. a bum bitch. And oh, and it says <laughs> nice one, I bum bitch. Just, you hear what he was, what, what, he, what she called you? She called you, you bum, bum bitch. bitch. Oh, I I heard I heard you. Well, I mean, <laughs> why do you have to be so mean? This was I was just trying to make you breakfast. <laughs> Thalamir. Oh, uh, on my turn, I move over to pick up the uh, um, uh, Batu, and I kind of yep. like put him over my shoulder, and I start walking towards, or, or like trying to get to the the wagon with him as fast as possible. Okay, you are yeah. able to uh, actually make a perception check for me. Perception rolled a fifteen, and okay. I believe my perception is plus. Five or seven, so it's going to be over 21 way or the other. As you approach, you see that Batu, Batu has managed to undo his hand binds, but is hiding it. Ah. Mm. Uh, in that case, I, uh, if I if I do see that as I'm, as I'm going up to him, I retie. Uh, he's going to fight you about that. His hands are free, so he's going to start punching at you. Oh, oh, he's all, okay. Yeah, I got to, I have to try to retie him. Uh, mm-hmm. Go ahead and make a dexterity sleight of hand check. All right. Uh, that is nine. That's not going to do it. Uh, as he's already managed to undo his hand binds, so trying to just retie them, he's just able to sort of wave his hands around, and you're not able to get a new grip on it. Get over and he's get over here. he's going to start. He's going to start elbowing at you, and he's reaching up towards his mouth to get rid mm. of his uh, mouth um, gag. Uh, can I just follow up with a basic free action, like hold, like grab around his arms? Yeah, go ahead and grapple. Uh, so this would be a physical attack. This would be, uh, you could do an athletics check actually, and I'll do a dexterity check. Uh, 12 plus athletics. Yeah, you got that one. So you can grab his, you can grab him around the midsection and hold his arms next to him. That's what I'm doing. But he's sort of wriggling like a, like a cat that doesn't want to be hugged. That- that sounds accurate, like a cat. Yep. So I'm, I'm holding him for my turn. Okay. Krulax. Okay. Uh, can I pull the whip axe back and try again? Sure. Okay. And that since is it the missed, benefit of having a whip axe. Yeah. And since it missed, you don't need to make the the save. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Well, we're gonna try again. If you don't succeed, if at first you don't succeed, axe again. Yep. <laughs> oh my god! That is a nat 20! I need to roll twos and twenties! Nothing in between! Love it! <laughs> so you roll. All or nothing. So with a nat 20, you get to roll double your damage. Sweet! Uh, so my double, damage. Sorry, double the... your dice and then add your bonuses. Okay, there's. Ouch! Not a... That hurts quite a bit. <laughs> Why do you have to be so cruel, Krulax? <laughs> it's in the name! <laughs> I'm not kind X. <laughs> <laughs> That's a okay. Fair uh, point. Well, I've rolled a three into one, so four plus uh, plus. Uh, let's see, in the whip axe, four. So, so four plus four. Eight. Yeah. Cool. It takes that damage. Cool. So I he takes I, I wind up the whip axe and I whip it right at him and it catches him right in the inner dragon thigh. Nice. <laughs> Go straight to your thighs. Um. <laughs> It is now initiative count 20, which means I get a lair action. Just a quick note, I am still holding on to the end of the whip. So sure. I don't know what that means if the dragon flies up any higher or anything. You know what? Just a heads up. <laughs> well, I guess we'll find out. Do you want it to stay <laughs> embedded in the dragon? It can be hooked around his ankle. Yeah, sure. yank him down. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it wraps around his ankle and hits him in the thigh. Um, it is now initiative count 20. And on initiative count 20, Grasping roots and vines erupt in a 20-foot radius centered on a point on the ground that I can see. So mm-hmm. we're going to catch these characters here, Uh-oh. which is Krulax, the Rot Grub Pot, the Scale Sorcerer, um, 
And me, Ma Kaizen. Uh, Kaizen and Deborah all are caught in this uh, grasping roots and vines. Uh, this I quickly area, try to climb up the whip as I see <laughs> No. Sure. Uh, okay. This So this area becomes difficult terrain, um, and I need strength saving throws from each of you. I have uh, rolled a total of 13. Mine's a 19 yeah, a total. Total of four. Oh, oh, geez. oh, geez. That could be all of you way over uh, there with the dragon. Kaizen? Uh, 19 total. 19? You save. Yeah. Um, the rest of you are restrained. Your mm. movement oh. is zero. You can take an action to make another one of those checks to get out of the roots and vines, but it is still difficult terrain. Mm. Uh, for Krulax, though, you are holding on to the uh, the whip. Correct. So, so if Bumbridge moves, you can move with it, depending Sweet. on. Sweet. <laughs> but you're 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 getting pulled by vines and pulled by the dragon. So you'll have to make a strength check to hold on. Okay. When it's your oh, turn. Geez. All right. Deborah, it's your turn. You're now restrained in grasping roots and vines, and you have, uh, you have line of sight on Bumbridge. The grubs, can I use my magic hand to pick up um, a bunch of the grubs? Sure. And this is a question, and I would like to insert these grubs into into a Bumbridge's eyeballs. Oh, okay, <laughs> sure. We'll go ahead and make this one an Arcana check to see if you can aim the grubs. Let me find the Arcana. But yeah, you can Arcana. scoop up like the half shattered <laughs> pot and get a nice big old two scoops of raisins and bring mm -hmm. it up to Bumbridge's big snout. Yeah, I think the eyeballs is good, but maybe the nose is better. Sure. Um, but no, I mean, he can probably do fire same, out of the nose. I want to do the area, eyeballs. you know. Okay, yeah, we'll get in there. Blinding okay. is good. My arcana is proficient plus four, and I rolled an 11. Okay. So, 15. So yeah, uh, so that's that's probably good enough to get it up to, the, I mean, it's, it's good enough to get it up to Bumbridge. Not good enough to mm -hmm. jam them in the eyes. Um, but the Rot Grubs will get to attack on the Rot Grubs' turn, <clears throat> which is after you. Perfect. I want them right in position. It's the Rot Grubs' turn, unless you want to do something else. You have a um, bonus action. Bonus action? Uh, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to uh, reach from my pocket, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start, uh, I'm gonna sprinkle, uh, uh, I'm gonna grab, I've got 800 oily copper coins. Sure. Um, <laughs> I wanna just, as many as I can grab, I just wanna spread um, in the vicinity, kinda like chicken feed, just all over these yeah. roots. Great. <laughs> nice. You are, you are uh, flower girl in it up, just making it rain, oily copper pieces. <laughs> all over the uh, place. Can, can we just say, I wanna drop 100 of them. That sure. seemed like a good number. Sounds good to me. Uh, okay. we, do you want it just in front of you, or do you want them all around you? Um, I want them in like a ten-foot radius in front of me. Okay. Um, it's the rot grubs' turn. Hmm. So go ahead and make an attack roll for your rot grubs. Ooh, nineteen. Nice. 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 Nineteen does hit. Damn, grubs deliver. <laughs> um, the target is infested by one d four rot grubs. Let's roll a d four here. That's a two. So on right. each of the target's turns, it takes a D6 piercing per rot grub infesting it. Holy applying fire crap. To the, applying fire to the bite wound before the end of the target's turn deals one fire damage to the target and kills the rot grubs. After this time, those rot grubs are far too under the skin to be burned. Jeepers. If a target infested by rot grubs ends its turn with zero hit points, it dies as the rot grubs burrow into its heart and kill it. Oh, Any effect that kills disease kills <laughs> all rot grubs infesting the target. So, dude, that was awesome. <laughs> at the start of its turn, it's gonna have to do something. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty important. Damage sponsored by Rot Grub Hub. Dude, if you if you kill this dragon by burrowing rot grubs through its eyes and into its heart, you will be yeah. fucking legendary, Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it is the. It is now initiative count ten, which means it's Bumbridge's turn. I think you mean oh, bum bitch. Bum yeah, bitch. That's right. turn. Uh, it is going to start by taking rot grub damage, and it takes seven rot grub damage. Okay. Yeah. Oh, look okay, at this. Okay. The little pet rock is finding his way in our hearts. 17. He can stay. <laughs> um, 
Bumbridge is going to uh, sort of align its tail where the rot grubs are with Kaizen and Krulax. And it's going to go, well, I didn't want it to be this way because I haven't had my coffee. I haven't (laughs) had my tea. And I kind of still have morning breath. You want to see? And it's going to exhale a cone of poison breath in your uh, directions. Oh, jeez. I need each of you to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. I would like it to be known that I was pro Billy the whole time. Uh, And all I wanted was a breakfast. I rolled a nat 20. Nice. All right. Uh, My higher dice is 16. Okay, so it's 16 plus 5, 21. Excellent. So you're each going to take half of 6d6 damage. Uh, so ha- so the roll was 24 Jesus. poison. Damn. Reduced to half is 12. So Damn. Kaizen, you take 12 poison. Krulax, you take half of that. You six. take 6 poison damage. Oh, as, it looks like you are in so much trouble over there. Uh, as, I think 12 uh, also still. In, it also blows off one of the rot grubs from its tail. Uh, it is also going to fly away from you. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, oh, no. 40, 35, 40. Hold on! <laughs> Wait a second! I I'd, like to, uh, little cobalt. I'd like to try and hang on to the whip. Yeah, go ahead and make an athletics check. That's a 13 plus my athletics. Yeah. Which is, oh, plus 5. I guess I, it's are, um, proficient. You're able 18. to hold on to the whip. Woo! As you uh, you ghost ride the whip, bridge, and up. you're able to Indiana Jones your way across uh, across the cave mouth out of the grasping vines. Sweet, amazing. Uh, just a little <laughs> physics check here. If the dragon is moving and this pendulum that he has attached to him right now of a heavy dwarf, as the dragon stops. The dwarf technically will swing forward. Does he land on the dragon or anything? No. Oh, so he's okay. still... Uh, good question. He's still under the dragon. Gotcha. Okay, um, okay. However, Krulax, I will let you choose whether you want to stop short or swing forward and choose where along this line you want to land. Okay. Uh, uh, so I would like, like to this. land... Uh, let's let's stop short. Let's land as far away as I can, because in case okay. he uses one of those cone attacks again. I'll let you... I think he so, farted. <laughs> the cone fart? The poison so that, fart? That, that's about as far as you can be. You're still, like, next to the grasping vines, but you're not in them. So you can okay. stop right about there-ish, which is uh, 15 feet away and still 15 feet under mm-hmm. Bumbridge. It's now Mike's turn. How exciting is that? Mike, the green-scaled sorcerer who with broken loves feet. <laughs> with broken feet so he can't move. <laughs> uh, who is bound and gagged? He is bound and gagged. He's going to take an action to try to undo his binds. So the green-scaled sorcerer Mike rolls an 18 on his dice, which means he's able to start undoing his binds and his hands are free. He's going to do his bonus action to take his uh, gag out of his mouth. And he is going to... uh, He's got no movement because he's stuck in vines and also has no feet. (laughs) (laughs) Quacha. Quacha says, who need... Does anyone need healing or else I'm just going to hide? I definitely need healing. You need healing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Of the soul, of the mind, of the body. Quacha can actually get up to you. Yes. Which means that Quacha can cast Cure Wounds. Quacha is going to cast Cure Wounds at the only level that I can, which is a D8 plus two, which means you heal seven. Damn. Damn. Uh, And also, I need you to make a constitution saving throw because Quacha touched you with their poisonous skin. 12 plus 1, 13. Okay, you're good. You are not poisoned. Cool. Quacha, I know I know that our our people have little some 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 racism against y'all, but you know what? We have proven ourselves. 
that um, you know we can grow from that. And I very much appreciate you. This is the second time you've healed me. And and you know what, Quacha, I need you in my life. Oh my I God! This character, character development. development. Character I'm, development. I'm, Kaizen's overcoming her racism. That's right. That's I'm right. We're proud so of happy to hear that. Um, don't die. <laughs> I will also try to not die. So now. After Quatch is done, Quatch's full movement was to get over to uh, to Kaizen. It's now going to be Batu's turn. Batu, who's Butter. currently being grappled by Falamere, um, the wannabe necromancer that you guys have had captured and has a death wish specifically, uh, has multiple death wishes, either to die or become death itself, is going to try <laughs> to escape Falamere's grapple again. I need you to make a strength check. Uh, so it's an 18. <laughs> Mine is an 18 on the dice, plus uh -oh. one for dexterity. Uh -oh. Oh. So Batu escapes your grasp. Shoot. And s instead of trying to reach up for his mouth, is going to run uh, towards the cave entrance. Uh, half, half speed, because he had to escape the grapple. You have an attack of opportunity, Falomir, if you wish. Uh. Do it. Yeah. Arrow him right in the neck. Yeah, we're no. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna do uh, like an accuracy attack because I want an arrow to go through his uh, his calf. Cool. Ooh, do the calf Tar thigh. So a Either targeted calf. attack. Go ahead and uh, make an attack roll. Uh, and it's plus seven. Okay. Six plus seven is a thirteen. That would normally hit a unarmored warlock, but you are aiming specifically for his calf. Oh no. I'm gonna say it doesn't hit his calf. It instead hits him in the butt. <laughs> okay. uh, like, a, like a bit of a grazing shot, so still go ahead and roll some damage. All right, uh, damage is a D8. Uh, it's, a, it's a D8 plus three. Okay, it's only plus three. Try not to kill the guy. Because again, I believe the reward was for a live. Correct. Yes, we have uh, to have him alive. It is, yeah, it's five plus three is eight total damage. Eight total damage. Did you roll an attack with your arrows? Uh, yeah. So you can't make an op. You have to use a melee weapon. Oh, uh, it has to be a melee weapon. So I'm uh. <laughs> weapon. Well, because I was holding them. <laughs> So I guess I wouldn't even be do using my sickles that I have. It would just be an unarmed strike. Probably. Kaizen, you have uh, just been healed uh, because from a poisonous person because you've just taken damage from a poisonous person. Um, you are also uh, in difficult terrain. Okay, let's let's try let's try to dash. Let's dash, and I'll use my um, and I can get up to him. Yep. 35 Ooh, okay. feet, because you have 35 feet of movement. Okay, cool. I just want to uh, strike him to knock him out. I don't want to kill him. I just want right. to knock him out. So you, your, your move was to get out of the bushes. Your action was to dash to get up to him. You have a bonus action. So I, I'd like to, I'd like to just uh, do a double strike to his temple so that he passes out. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make an attack roll. 12 plus 7. 12 plus 7 will hit. 19. Ooh, yes. That's a good hit. Ooh, we hitting today. Oh, we've been working out. That's for trying right to run. Uh, that's hook. what we do our I monk believe, action for. So that did cost you a key point, yes, to attack as a bonus? Yes. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I want to dash straight up to Batu. Yep. No, not today, bitch. And yep. I, uh, I just do double fists to his temple. Okay. Uh, so I'll say that I need to make, like, a constitution saving throw to, to not be dazed, let's say. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage anyway. I'm going to okay. save. I rolled high. Uh, it's a two plus five. Okay. So he takes seven. Cool, cool, cool. Falomer. Whew, I, I didn't kill him. Thank goodness. <laughs> Uh, for my turn, I see that I have a, uh, uh, a, a prisoner running away. Yes. So, because I'm an expert archer, I'm going to now attempt to shoot, uh, at his calf to get him to, uh, I need to uh, stop him from running. Okay. Go ahead and make an attack roll. You're shooting at Batu, correct? Correct. Batu. Okay. 
turning uh, I, away from the giant green dragon. Uh, yes. As as I <laughs> yell up to the dragon, as I yell to the dragon, I had nothing against you. I was looking forward to the breakfast. I am so sorry for my friends. Uh, and I take an arrow uh, and then fire it at uh, Batu's legs. Okay. Uh, that is 13 plus 7. Yep, that hits. Sweet. Uh, and then... Is this damage, or again, this was towards his calf? This is, is towards his calf. So his armor class is 13, and because it was a targeted strike, I gave him plus 5 to his armor class. But you're aiming... Wow. Sp- but you hit, because you have plus 7 to your roll, which means you hit him in his calf, which is the intended effect of which was to, to uh, hobble him. So he's prone. Uh, then And then for my move action is to run towards him. Okay. You're up next to him. Great. Uh, uh, you can s- go ahead and roll your damage. Damage for oh. the shot, but I'm only going to take half of the damage uh, because your your object was to shoot him in the uh, heel. Seven plus three is ten. So I'll deal him five damage. Uh, and and just for for clarity's sake, as I run up to him, I'm like, you know, get it, jump it on top of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so you're gonna like use the rest of your action to like tackle? Uh, I don't know if I get that dog pile. Particular action. Yeah, I just do like, it. I want him to like not yeah. run away. Elbow so. drop. We yeah. do. We yeah. do the do the uh, Randy Savage. We get in there. Damn right. You know, full on frog splash. Although that would be <laughs> Quacha, I guess. You do a body <laughs> slam. Um, cool. Krulax. Yes. You are being dangled. Uh huh. Yep. So I'm off the ground. Yes. You are. You are floating about. Your feet are about five feet off the ground. Sweet. Uh, all right. Well, so I've got the whip axe, and I have my other hand axe. So I guess with my other hand, I'd like to uh, to throw an axe at the dragon. Cool. And I'd like <laughs> to yell at my cool. teammates. Yeah. So so we're we're not worried about the dragon anymore. You guys are. <laughs> it, takes, it really takes two guys to handle the you necromancer. Got him. All right. Whatever. I'll fight this dragon. <laughs> to be continued. Next time on Tales from Tetheria. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see next week's video, that'll be over here if it's out yet. It might not be out, in which case this will probably just be a random video. Uh, and oh, don't forget to watch us play Ghost Castle uh, over here. That's me and Sohinki and Jovenshire and Mari. And, and subscribe if you haven't yet. All right. Thanks. Bye.